And now it gives me great pleasure to change the topic slightly um, because I've got Elliot Yunus, uh, who's Chief Development Officer, Executive Vice President uh, for the Radisson, Radisson Hotel Group, I think it is now, Not, no longer the res... Oh, da no, that's David. Where's... Uh, where's oh, there you are, Ellie. <laughs> David, I could talk to you about your, this, all this wonderful stuff you've put in this room, but I... Ellie, good, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hi, yeah. everyone. So, uh, so this is going to be a bit of a therapy session? Yes. Okay. Close your eyes. All right. Did you, <laughs> were you there for that session? You weren't there for the session no, yesterday, I so I, I won't take okay. you down there. Yeah. But the, listen, lovely to see you. Same here. And thank you for coming. Um, Ellie, you've been such a great supporter of this event and what we've been doing yeah. for the last 14 years. And so you've been doing a very good job. Well, thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, so now tell us, you're all about <coughs> deals, and yeah. you know, you've been very successful as a, through the, the Residor Group originally as a European company you know, getting into some of the markets that probably the other global brands haven't done as successfully. But let's talk about a good deal. What, what to you, what, for you, what is a good deal? I wish there was a book that can say that. Uh, the, uh, everything boils down to people and energy at the end of the day. Uh, the, the, the main ingredients of a good deal is, first of all, the right partner. Uh, specifically in this part of the world, you cannot miss on that. You need to have somebody with whom you can dance, with whom you can um, do business for a long time. Uh, a good deal is a deal that, that creates value to everybody, both, uh, both sides, but also other stakeholders, employees and guests alike. Uh, it's probably a simple deal. And sometimes a good deal is a deal that you don't do because mm -hmm. it's not for you. Yeah. So we heard a lot from the owners yesterday about you know some of the issues that they have with the operators and um, you know sometimes these contracts these long term contracts they can't get out of there yeah. you know it, is there that issue that we saw yesterday with the I mean you must be having those conversations all the time with the owners yep. about you know how can how can you improve the relationship and move the relationship? How can you learn from each other? I, I don't think the issue is contractual. The issue is more behavioral and, and relationship driven. So, so we would approach it more on the relationship side, on the engagement side. And the main difference, I think, is simplicity. Uh, this is what makes a difference. Contractually, yeah. you can always sit down and solve an issue. You can sign anything you want. At the end of the day, if it's not working, you will sit down and fix it. Right. Okay, so what... Um, what are those? Uh, wh what are some of the challenges that you face then at the moment? Challenges. Um, see, w w w when we talk about growth, there are two different challenges. The first one is transactional. Today, it's a bit difficult to find markets like Russia and and uh, and Africa that we identified ten years ago, and we decided to move that as a first mover, and we reaped and we realized our gains there. So today, it's a little bit difficult to find those markets because they don't exist. Everybody is everywhere. So the challenge today is on that front is to really try and innovate yourself where you are and grow in the markets where you already exist. Now, you can do that in two ways. The first way is probably linear thinking, and you do it a la Marriott. So you go and have 30 brands. So you have different and different offerings, and there's nothing wrong with that to your owners. Or you can choose to think a little bit laterally or in, in a different way. Uh, and creatively, and that's a bit more challenging. That this is where the challenge is. But do things different. To but be, I would have thought innovate. for you the geopolitical issues is a real challenge because you're in some of these markets like Russia, for example, at the moment. So that must be a challenge for you. That is a challenge, but in the long term, if you look at Russia, that's a good example. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a short-term challenge, but in the long term, I don't see that as a challenge. The big challenge in Russia is to support our 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 growth uh, our growth there. See, organizations can, can develop transactions and then you, you convert them into hotels. And the, one of the biggest challenges there is not really the geopolitical challenge because you face that, everybody faces that. It's your habitat. You have to live with it. But the real challenge is really to support growth, to create an organization that can absorb it and specifically to have the right talents to, 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 uh, to manage your hotels, to understand the culture, to understand your owners, and to eventually run those relationships with the owners. So from a talent breeding perspective, I would say that's the most dominant challenge rather than the geopolitics. So like our session this morning when we were talking about uh, localization, amortization. Absolutely. 
So that's one of your key challenges. Is that for filling the hotels, or is, it, or is that for your team in terms of the development? It's for us as as uh, as a business to really support the growth. So really, at the end of the day, you need to open the hotel. You need to have a healthy relationship with your owner, and. You don't do that by sitting in the head office. You have to do that on the ground. And the only person who does that for you is the general manager. So, our, so, so the challenge is to breed those talents, to be there, who understand the owners, who understand the, in the business, and that can deliver eventually. Right. And what, um, so t you know, how have you become, I, I think in Europe, you're the largest. Yeah. What, what sector are you now, the largest? Up and up scale. Okay. But so how have you managed to get into this space, which is um, otherwise dominated by the big brands? What have you done that's different? We've been the largest upper upscale brand in Europe with Radisson Blue for the last, since 2010 now, with 182 hotels. The second largest brand has 120, so the difference is 50% more. And the recipe for, for that, I think, boils down to people. Goes back to people, to belief and uh, to trying to simplify life and make things differently. Okay, so you've done that, you've yeah. simplified life, you've got the right people, but still, what is it that is bringing the owners on board with you? Simplicity. Okay. Is the word. Right. Simpli the simplicity in your contract, simplicity in your approach, and aligning your interests with that of the owners. This okay. is number one key. Okay, but the <coughs> that's fine. Yeah. Understand simplicity, that's great, but that's not always what the banks want. That's true. They want something that's going to make a deal stack up. So how are you doing that? To be successful, and specifically for owners, you need to, to tick four or five boxes. You need to create a revenue advantage. You need to create a cost advantage. And this is satisfies the financial aspect of it, both for the owner and for the bank. And I fully agree to that. But relationships go beyond that. You need to engage and you need to be relevant. So to answer you, on the banking side, I fully agree. You need to be, you need, you need to, to tick the box on creating the revenue advantage, which we do, and I'm sure all our colleagues in the industry do this claim to do the same, or better or less, same on the cost side, but equally so, the engagement part, and being relevant, not just to the customer, but also to the investor and to the lender, and everything that you do is very important. Okay. You have, see, this business has two customers. One is the guest that stays at your hotel, and the other one is the owner. And unless you're relevant to both of these customers, you are doomed to fail. Because you're primarily a management company, aren't you? We are. In, uh, different to the US, but in, in Europe, Middle East, and in Africa, EMEA, we are 80% of our uh, hotels are managed. Okay, so 70 to 80%. So moving into Africa. Yep. Tell us about Africa. Africa, the biggest challenge there is not to sign the transaction, but to deliver. It's the transformation that's, that's the most challenging. Deals are available, but the biggest challenge is to transform that deal in an open hotel. And as you can see, everybody's signing deals. We have 30, 30 40, 50 hotels in the pipeline. I promise not to use the word pipeline today, but I, here I am. Uh, but the challenge is really to convert that pipeline into open hotels. And to do that, you need to do two things. First, you need to, to pick the right projects, the right partner, but also work hand in hand with those partners along throughout the journey of of transforming that plot of land into a hotel. That's one of the biggest challenges. The second one is talent. Everything goes back to talent, okay. more or less. So what, what to you makes a really happy owner? If they were robots, I would say money, but they're not. So you would need, it goes back to the four boxes that we spoke about. You need to create a revenue advantage. That's not sufficient. You need to create a cost advantage. Not everybody is good at doing that. You need to engage with your owners from a relationship perspective, communication. But as importantly also, you need to be relevant. Relevant in whatever you do to that owner. Your brands have to be relevant, not just for the guest, but also to the owner from an economic and real estate perspective. Once you have that package in place, I think eventually you will get a happy owner. So previous panel OTAs and direct booking, I mean, that must be one of your biggest challenges with us. It is one of the biggest challenges, but it's a small part of the big equation. What we do, we manage a PNL and a balance sheet. The OTA cost is one aspect of the profit and loss statement. It's, it doesn't exist on your balance sheet. And 
and as operators, we have so many other responsibilities, but you're absolutely right. One of the biggest challenges today is to reduce your distribution cost, and OTAs is one of the main issues at hand. Okay. Um, so what, uh, what keeps you awake at night at, at the moment? My wife. <laughs> Beyond young, that. Young, young family. <laughs> Um, timing, yeah. timing. Uh, I would say timing today is is something that I can't understand very well. Timing in terms of where are we in the cycle? We've been having nine years of or eight years of consecutive growth today. So, and that cannot continue. Economic gravity has to prevail. The question that I keep asking myself: When will that happen? One cannot assume, or would be fool to assume, that this will not happen. The question that, I, that keeps me awake, as you say, is probably when is that going to happen? The second thing that keeps me awake is, uh, is more on the bigger picture, I would say, and that is uh, the quality of the global leadership in the world today. I see a lot of aggression in the world and less peacemaking, and that keeps me awake. So the whole element of uh, trust leadership and... Yep. Yeah. If you qualify the leaders that we have globally today, you see, you, you feel more, much more aggression than, than peacemaking. Yeah. The Gandhis of the world don't exist today. Yeah. Don't seem to exist. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a big issue. We heard yeah. from Dr. Martin Berlin yesterday talking on exactly yeah. that, the whole issue yeah. of trust in our leaders yes. today. So um, it's a good, good point that's raised. But um, just on timing then, these deals, are you, in going looking at Africa, are you beginning to see that timeline shorten now in terms of development? Because that must be a frustration for you, because you see so much opportunity in that market, but there's still such a long development pipeline. Africa is a long-term game. So it's probably the last emerging market in the world today. We look at it as a long-term game. We have 35 hotels open organically, and we have 35 under construction today. So looking at the continent, I see more optimism there than, than not. I would say we can double it, and the opportunity is great not just for us, but for everybody else. It's an, it's an education thing that you, know, you need to do, and it the is, industry needs to do. To it's get education into. and evolution as well. Yeah. The continent has to go through some form of evolution on the uh, social the demographic side, education, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Finding yeah. good talent in Africa to run the hotels is challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ellie, is there one last thing you want to mention about what you're doing, where you're going, uh, before we close off this little session? No. Thank you. All right. Well, Any one last thing from, all right. the, from the audience? Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you for sir. being part of the journey. I appreciate all your Thank support you. over the years. Ellie, please show your appreciation Jonathan. to Ellie. Thank you, everyone.